Well, hi, Aaron. Uh, so it seems like you've got some news that you'd like to share with our church family. How, how are you going at the moment? Well, yeah, I'm not sure it's um, news I'd necessarily like to share, but I think it's definitely news that's, um, that's helpful to share. And that is that, um, uh, well, at this stage, three people in our house, including me, have uh, this past week tested positive for COVID. So, um, yeah, Gabby and I found out last night and we found out about Ada on, uh, on Monday night. So we knew where all Ada was first and then the rest of the family were tested on Tuesday. Uh, Gabby and I found out last night. Physic Felix is a trooper, still negative, you know, uh, good immune system there. Uh, not sure about Charlie as we are recording this. Yeah, so I guess that's the news. Yeah, so how are you and Gabby and the kids going at the moment? Oh, pretty well overall. Uh, Ada was tested because she was feeling unwell for one day, uh, but she bounced back really quickly and has had no symptoms since. Uh, Gabby's been asymptomatic the whole time. I've had some fairly mild symptoms uh, that are still hanging around a little bit, but uh, yeah, nothing too severe. So I think we're, we're feeling pretty good. And um, yeah, probably just getting our heads around the whole process of testing and contact tracing, interviews with various people. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think we're doing okay. We're, we're well physically and we're getting used to the uh, emotionally, the concept of just being in lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we're, we're gonna be putting this out there as another one of our pastor's chats and we've already uh, filmed a few, a couple have gone online so far and in them we've been talking about uh, kind of four G's uh, that God is, let me just check them again. God is great. God is glorious. God is good. God is gracious. Um, is there one of those four G's at the moment you're kind of really holding on to uh, during this time? Yeah, like uh, probably all of them to some extent, aren't they? They're so kind of central truths to our faith, aren't they? But I, I, I do think um, it's God is God is glorious, so we don't have to fear others, isn't it? Or, or fear other things. And I definitely think that's that's probably the, been the main thing, uh, is uh, getting the results, feeling some symptoms, um, and just being a bit fearful of how bad are the symptoms going to get. And rather than being able to stay in the present and, and trust God, uh, perhaps running ahead with worries about how things could turn out, uh, and, and so that's kind of like, I guess, being overly fearful, perhaps, of, of COVID. Uh, and then since we found out there were positive results, I guess there's also been an element of you know, some fear, or maybe fear is too strong, but a, a sense of unease about having to tell other people about it and what will they think. And, um, you know, we, we've been doing our best to be as safe as possible and follow all the rules. Uh, but it can feel like other people might think, oh, you guys must have been flaunting the system or something. And that's why, yeah, that, that's why you've tested positive. And so I've had to keep reminding myself that it's, um, that it's Christ's opinion of me and us that matters most. And yeah, so that's probably the, the key G. God is glorious. So don't have to fear uh, other people or, or things. Mm, yeah. So um, having begun this experience, kind of in the middle of this experience now of having to self-isolate and all those sorts of things, um, you feel you have anything, you know, any words of encouragement for other people in that church family who might uh, have tested positive for COVID or who might be in quarantine at the moment? Yeah, well, part of the reason for wanting to do pastor's chat like this uh, was just to, I guess, to maybe model in some way uh, that um, it's important for us as a church family, if people do test positive, for us to be able to be open with one another about it uh, appropriately and um, to seek love and care and support from one another. And so I guess that would be my main encouragement. Uh, yeah, the whole concept of needing to quarantine and isolate, of course, is designed to in some way cut you off from other people. Uh, but if you test positive, uh, as we have, uh, we're not wanting people in our church family to feel like they're cut off from others. We want you to feel that you can 
share about the fact that you've tested positive or that you're needing to isolate and uh, to allow your brothers and sisters at DPC to, to love and care for you in practical mm. ways. So I guess in line with that, what can our church family do to help you and the family at this time? Yeah, thanks. And we've already, um, some people through various means have already found out uh, that we tested positive. And so, yeah, we've already had some meals being dropped over. Uh, we just love it if you'd pray for us that uh, we'd keep uh, staying healthy or recovering well. Um, yeah, pray. Yeah, I guess praying is probably the main thing. And uh, I guess we'll reach out. We're really thankful for the offers of, of care and support. And at the moment, we feel pretty well set up. Uh, we are blessed as well to have some lovely neighbours across the road and some shops just around the corner. And so, it's yeah, it's quite helpful for us having our neighbours who are happy to walk to the end of the street. Uh, and it's a good opportunity for us to keep connecting with them and uh, getting to know them as well. And so, yeah, so I think... Um, Probably the main things are we're thankful for offers offers of prayer uh, of practical help, and uh, we've definitely taken up some of those things. Uh, uh, but we'd really value your prayers. Yeah. Hmm. Um, an important question: uh, Can you still get access to good coffee? Yeah, well, it's difficult, but that's one of the things that um, it's one of the things that my, well, two two things. One, of, like my uh, our neighbour across the street went to Crunch. This is our kind of local. If you know me, you may have even met with me in Crunch before. So he went down to Crunch and, and got me a takeaway coffee this morning, which is very kind. And then Matt, the owner of Crunch, who's also one of our neighbours, kind of lives out the back of the cafe. Uh, he uh, kindly ground some Crunch coffee beans uh, for me and walked them up and and hand delivered them. Uh, so yeah, so that, uh, so I have access to good coffee. Yeah, great, good, good, yeah. good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, perhaps more importantly, um, I, I thought it might be good for, for me to pray for you now and maybe share some words of encouragement from Romans 8 that might also be encouraging uh, yeah, for other people. Uh, and I thought it was relevant given that we've just started back in Romans. Uh, it's great to have you preaching through uh, Romans 9. Uh, mm. This is from Romans 8, 18 to 25. It says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. How about I pray for you and the family? Really appreciate that. Heavenly Father, we've been reminded uh, yet again that this world and this life are not the way they're supposed to be. Uh, we struggle with uh, many things, uh, but at the moment there's a, a great struggle with coronavirus. Um, we... I uh, find that our bodies fail us. We find that uh, there's strain put on our relationships and society. Uh, we feel at times that even the, the creation uh, is groaning and even is against us at times. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would remind Aaron and Gabby and the kids that uh, they, they don't need to put their hope in this life, but rather in the glorious future to come. Uh, help them to uh, be sustained in that hope. Uh, please heal them, uh, keep them safe. Uh, thanks that they're being cared for and I pray that they will continue to be cared for and supported by their neighbours and by their church family. Uh, and please help them to, to not minimise their present sufferings, but rather magnify the glory to come. And as they uh, approach each day in hope, help them to not be in fear, uh, but to know that you are glorious, uh, that you are accepted uh, by them already. You are, they are safe and secure with you, Lord. Amen. Well, I suppose that the final thing that we could say is to, to anyone out there who feels they need some support or some encouragement 
uh, that they can still get in touch with us. You're still available for people to get in touch with. And there's the, uh, the other elders and other gospel community leaders. Uh, so we don't want people to feel they have to suffer yeah. in silence. Absolutely. Yeah, please be in touch. I am taking uh, some reduced duties this week, um, just in light of everything that, <laughs> that's uh, going on for us this week. Uh, but yeah, there are plenty of the other elders and GC leaders uh, will definitely be eager to hear from you if you need. And, uh, and I'm happy, uh, I'm eager to respond as I'm able. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, this has been our next pastor's chat. Uh, I hope that you guys have found it encouraging and we'll see you online and around soon. Bye.